just making sure that we're all getting started. Uh, let's see here. Steve, can you hear me? I can hear you, Blake. I'm here. All right, I'm going to take over. I don't, I don't know what, what, what went flipped over to Steve's screen. I was going to take over, but I'm, I'm going to take over right now. Uh, thanks, Stelios. I'm glad you can hear me. All right, so good morning, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You were listening to the uh, face webinar. That was Stelios, Contagoulas, and uh, Steve's going to be joining me uh, also as well, or joining us here shortly. Um, and uh, Dale's not feeling well today, so when you guys uh, when you guys get an opportunity and you get a, you get a chance to uh, to talk to him next, or you can send him a, a, a nice little tweet, uh, he is just not feeling good today. So uh, we're the three of us are going to take over uh, and and um, go into the markets and go into the majors. So it's been a really Blake. Good yes. morning, mate. There is a good chance that Greg is also going to be with us. Uh... At the last part of the uh, webinar. Great, great. Okay, thanks. Um, I forget what I was saying. Sorry, that's my fault. Um, it's been a really slow night overnight, and uh, and and so there there hasn't been a lot of activity, and so what 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 I'm actually looking at is just, well obviously a lot of consolidation, but what what um. What we're paying attention to and what I'm going to be paying attention to is the Canadian. Obviously, we have uh, after yesterday, we have the, uh, the the Canadian retail sales produced a move that took us to the 127 percent extension and and we, we came we came off. And that was also the 200 day moving average. So th this is a really, you know, if you guys um, are, are watching the Canadian closely, this is a really critical, critical. Uh, trend line resistance that we've uh, we, we've penetrated, but we're at the 200 day. It's a very, um, you know, it's it's kind of an iffy area for the, for the pair. I could see it going either direction. Uh, it, it's it it could it it could be a spectacular failure here, uh, and and could roll over and and you know reject the 200 day moving average, have a false breakout of the the this this trend line and come back down, especially if uh, CPI data comes in a little hotter than expected uh, today. But the the uh, the flip side to that is that um, you know we could uh, we could actually get a really massive breakout, and uh, you know frankly, I could, like I said, I could see either or, but. The one thing that I have to note is that the euro dollar, as big of a bounce as we saw yesterday, there's been no follow through. So, uh, matter of fact, we're 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 trading pretty heavy right now, meaning the dollar is a little bit firmer than you know, I, I would have thought that we would have been today. I, I thought that the dollar would have been, you know on its back foot and the euro would, would have been well over 124. I, that's what I thought I was going to wake up to this morning. Uh, and so waking up, looking at the euro dollar and it's just trading around 123, I was very surprised. Um, so with that being said, I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about dollar weakness at the morning, in the morning. And I also, I sent out a tweet a little bit ago uh, about the US dollar Swedish Krona. The US dollar Swedish Krona is one of those currencies that, that I don't necessarily trade all the time. I trade it from time to time, but it's not one that I trade like, you know, religiously. But it is one currency that I like to have going in the same direction that I'm trading. So, what I mean by that is, if if I'm like, if if I was short the if I was short the dollar, I'm just going to give you an example, which I'm not, but I'm I'm not short the 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 dollar, but let's just say I was, and and meaning I was long the euro dollar, okay. So let's say I went I went home long the euro dollar overnight because I did feel that the euro is going to go above 124, and I I decided to take a position. If I was short the dollar, and I saw the US dollar Swedish Krona breaking higher like it is, that would, I would not be comfortable with that. I, I always like to have, not always, I mean, obviously there's special occasions and there's certain situations where, you know, if it's Swedish data that's moving the market or, you know, maybe European data that's really moving the market, it, you know, it might, might, might be different. But under a normal circumstance when there's no, like data that's actually moving the specific currencies, 
if I'm, if I was long the euro and short the dollar, but I saw the dollar Swedish krona breaking higher like this, it would freak me out. It would really make me second guess what I'm doing. And that is exactly why I put out that tweet this morning because you're, we're seeing this relative strength come through the US dollar Swedish krona. And it's um, even though, you know, the, 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 you know, um, um, Swedish economy is not the bellwether of the market. Sometimes it is kind of a leading indicator at times for me it, when I'm trading FX. And so when I'm seeing this this morning and I'm looking at the euro trading really weak, my, my, my opinion of the euro could be that we we take out this support now. I'm gonna I'm going to draw what I had drawn yesterday, and then I I redrew things uh, yesterday. So originally, I had this trend line like this, okay, and this is what it originally looked like. It looked just like this. All right. This is going this is going uh, into um, uh, yesterday. So. I'm just going to, let me get rid of this fib level for, for a moment. I can redraw that here in a moment. Okay. So I had the Euro dollar looking like this nice little, nice little, um, trend line, you know, very, very, uh, very well mannered yesterday after or yesterday morning, we broke through that support and I'm like, Oh, the Euro dollar is breaking down. And then we had this violent whip higher and, and I'm like, Oh, you know, maybe that was a false breakdown. Okay. Maybe, just maybe um, I just didn't draw it correctly, which, you know, I, I adjust trend lines all the time. I mean, you know, unfortunately, uh, when you're trading the markets, you gotta, you know, you got, you kind of got to make adjustments on the fly a lot of times because you, the way you see something is not necessarily the way the market's going to see it. So, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm like, okay, well maybe, maybe I just didn't draw it correctly. And, uh, and maybe we have like a kind of a loose, you know, channel that looks something like that or you know maybe something that looks like this or, or whatever the case may be well that's great and that's why the you know coming into yesterday i was thinking okay well you know the euro dollar is probably going to be trading above 124 when i get up and then i'll figure out what to do with it after that well it's weak and the euro dollar is barely barely hanging on to 123 which you know then i start looking at the us dollar swedish krona pretty strong it makes me think that the euro dollar risk right now is a break lower. Now I, I'm going to give you guys the same um, uh, argument that uh, I had from yesterday. The same argument being that the market is extremely long euros. And I believe position wise from a, from a, from a, um, institutional level is still very long euros and i believe that most people myself included feel that the euro dollar is going much higher over the course of the next you know 12 to 24 months so in other words i think the euro is going to 130 maybe 132 maybe a back up to the 140s who knows I, I, but i do think the euro is going higher i think the and, and institutions are positioned very long the euro right now which is a risk for the euro dollar in the near term because if if you know if you if you bought the euro last year at in in the 117 118 119 level you know at the end of last year you're not really too worried about the euro um because you're you're positioned accordingly you're like well if it slips back down to 120 121 i'll just buy some more but if you bought it at 122 123 124 you're probably a you know position poorly and you are susceptible to getting stopped out or you know um you know probably reducing some position size saying hey i'll buy some more when it gets to 122 but if it breaks below 120 122.50 i'm gonna have to get rid of some just so i don't have a really bad you know uh uh, uh position um going into going in, going into this move so I think the risks are still lower in the euro dollar. I think the risks are for a st still near term. And and watching the price action this morning, it's trading pretty heavy. All right. So and then then again throwing on the 
the uh, the rally in the U.S. dollar Swedish krona sure doesn't make me feel good. Now, um, and that's that's all I wanted to say about the euro dollar. It's just if you're long, just be really careful. I, I actually took a little bit of a short in the euro dollar, just a small position. Like you know, I, it's Friday. I don't like to get too aggressive on Fridays typically. Um, I'd rather you know. Um, take small positions, take a little loss, make a little gain, and then, uh, you know, uh, go play golf, which I'm, I'm, I'm scheduled to do later this afternoon anyway. So, uh, you know, and that's, that's, I'd rather have that kind of Friday than give myself all turn around and in a pickle. And, and then I'm, then I'm having a really bad day because my, my day gets progressively worse as I get on the golf course. And then I three putt my way around the golf course. Then I have a really, really bad day. So I don't want to put myself in that situation. I know a lot of you guys can feel that or, or could understand that. But anyway, um, so I think the risk is if if we break through 122.60, this is this is where, you know, this is where the downside opens up is, is below there. That's when that's when it starts to make people a little nervous, because, again, I'm going to reiterate, I, I went to bed last night thinking, oh, the euro dollar is going to be trading at 124 when I get up. It's going to be trading up here. How many people actually took action yesterday? looking at the euro dollar the way it closed yesterday you know right here thinking oh man this is a this this is a nice bullish reversal a little false breakdown over here i'm going to get long, long because we're going to we're going to be up at 124 tomorrow morning how many people got long based on that thesis i'm sure a lot you know so i'm sure the market went home long the euro yesterday and they're looking at the euro dollar this morning going oh crap it's exactly what's happening right now, in my opinion. So, um, uh, again, I think the risk is that that we break lower. Now, in order for that to happen, you got to look at the dollar index and go, well, that means the dollar index really needs to break higher here. And the dollar index is still trading quite heavy, and we can't even get above this dotted trend line. However, if we start breaking above yesterday's highs, which is 90 and a quarter, basically, and, and again, my trend lines are not perfect. I never um, – I never – said they are say they are and i'm i'm definitely open to adjusting things on the fly because i know i'm not perfect by any stretch of the means and as a technician uh, i know that uh, that that we're all, we all have to make adjustments so I, I think the trend line's right here but you know hey roughly i i think if we if we get above yesterday's highs the dollar could squeeze and we could start seeing that 91 level and why is 91 so big why is it so, so such a key level because that's previous support that's the previous consolidation support was at 91. And, but I think a move up to 91 if we break yesterday's highs is quite likely, okay? Now, if, if you're going, okay, well, if the dollar rallies, you know, wh where's that where's that going to leave, you know, the pound or the, the, the Kiwi or the Aussie or the Canadian? Well, you know, every currency is going to be a little bit different, but the dollar yen, I'll tell you, is not in the, the same wheelhouse as other dollar pairs. I'm going to ask you guys this question. Why do you think the dollar yen could continue lower, even if the dollar index rallies today? I'm going to ask you this question, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it again slowly. And I'm I'm looking at the Q&A panel so I can see your answers. If the dollar rallies, why or for what reason could it not translate into the dollar yen? The answers I'm getting is, uh, for the most part, and Ziggy, that this no, you're, you don't count. You can you read forex analytics an analysis, so you don't count. So, uh, but a lot of a lot of you guys in stocks. Well, stocks could be a reason, but give me another reason. Benedict, <laughs> you got it. For those of you guys, <laughs> Ziggy's laughing. For those of you guys that that were thinking the bond market, look, guys. Take a look at the bond market this morning. Bonds are strong. Yields are falling. We just came out of a, a descending wedge in the bond market. Look at the boons. We had a rounded bottom in the boon. The boons are actually previous support, current resistance. We're breaking above after hitting 127% extension. Yields are falling. If yields fall, the, the dollar, yen, or other yen pairs could fall as well. This is a 
valid concern if you're long the dollar yen, which you shouldn't be, because you know I, I'm I'm extremely bearish to the dollar yen, even though I'm not short at this moment. I think I've been in and out short the dollar yen at least ten times this week, and I've made a lot. I've made some really good money. Of course, you know if you use forex analytics, I have a continuous bias of bearish in in the uh, in the U.S. dollar Japanese yen I had for the last two weeks. But that's just because you know we're in breakdown territory. I still think the U.S. dollar and Japanese yen can get smashed, even if the dollar strengthens elsewhere. That means the other yen pairs will get killed, right? Right. So you got the euro yen getting destroyed, pound yen getting destroyed, Aussie yen approaching channel support but getting destroyed, New Zealand yen destroyed Canadian yen big double top destroyed these are all the, the all these yen pairs are all falling and they're going to continue to fall if bonds rally yields drop and stocks fall too all right they and they all look bearish all of them okay now um all right what the hell is going on Whoever is trying to squawk on Bloomberg is it's they, they're it, those speakers messed up. It sounds kind of funny. It sounds like crickets almost. Um, okay, so the cable had a like a crazy spike overnight. I have no idea what happened here, but uh, Amanda said it, Amanda in her chat room said it was a it was a fat finger or something, um, maybe the fix or something. But uh, but some crazy moves in the pound. So we, th this is a five minute chart. I mean, we sold off to 139 then rallied all the way back to 140. Crazy, right? I think so, it was pretty nuts. Anyway, um, so the pound saw some, a little bit of volatility. I think is one of the only things that, that actually was moving. Uh, Aussie's still trading pretty heavy, that, but, but very sideways. The Kiwi's trading heavy even after uh, yesterday's um, uh, uh, retail sales numbers, were, which were really strong. Um, that was the, I think that was the, I'm trying to think how many hours ago back that was, that was like right here and, uh, it's, we still slumped. Um, oh, I can hear the Bloomberg. It's a lady. Her squawk must've been all screwed up this morning. Anyway, um, here's the U S dollar Canadian. This is going to be the, this, this to me is going to be really important today. I, I I'm, 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 I'm game. For buying the dollar Canadian above 127.50, so above yesterday's highs, because you have to imagine if we break yesterday's highs, we're going to 128 and change or 130. I mean, we're going all, we're we're going up into this neighborhood. Let me let me uh, grab my pen. We're going up into this neighborhood um, if we break out, if we break highs. So I, I don't even mind chasing it at this point on this dollar Canadian. Flip side is is if we break break back below like 126 and a quarter. We're going right back down here too. So, I, I, and, and it, you know, yesterday's retail sales, it, they were weak, but they're, it's not important. I mean, it's important, but it's not that important. What's really important right now and what everybody's attention is on is inflation globally. This is not a US phenomenon. We haven't just been looking at wage inflation, consumer inflation, the cost of goods. We, we, we're not the only ones. Around the globe, inflation is the, 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 the hot topic point. So it's almost, it's, it, and it's almost as important as like employment data right now. And if inflation fails to show up, that's going to really throw off a lot of central banks moving forward. Um, and you know, our, and that's including the Fed. So if you look at, here, let me delete that. If you go to, okay, here's, here's Forex Factory. So uh, here's Canadian CPI. Okay, now um, let's grab my pen again. So we missed last read in CPI. You can see we missed that. We beat that one. We came in light, 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 in line, in line, light, light, light. I mean, you're talking the last, you know, um, seven months. We've we've come in light on on our read on CPI, you know, more times than not. So you know, CPI has obviously, you know, um, come in 
Now we could probably actually should look at um, the, uh, the, 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 the trimmed CPI, but, but everybody's obviously looking at the headline number right now. So, you know, CPI has come in a little weak. Uh, you know what? I don't need that. I'll just keep it over here. Um, so CPI has been coming in a little weak and if, if it comes in weaker than expected, I would not be surprised if we pull vault, vault through the highs. And then again, taking into account what I was saying about the dollar, then the dollar's got a little bit of a tailwind you know, if if the dollar starts picking up steam elsewhere, this dollar Canadian could go a lot higher today. I had, you know, and I, I posted a chart on Twitter yesterday and a lot of people were tweeting me back, the top's in, the top's in. And I'm like, I, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that thesis. I, I don't, I, I think the dollar Canadian could be seeing 130 again. Um, and and r remember guys, the, the dollar has been beaten down with the ugly stick. The, think about this. The dollar index has been beaten down with the ugly stick since January of 2017. We haven't even seen a short squeeze in the dollar yet. You haven't even seen one. You haven't even see, you haven't even begun to see what a short squeeze looks like in the dollar. The dollar could be trading at 93, 94 in three weeks' time, and you're going to wonder what the hell happened, and then resume its downtrend and it's gonna you, you know when you're in a strong trend especially let's talk downtrend just because you've got one sitting in front of your face right now when you're in a when you're in a downtrend and you see a sharp short squeeze they very much feel like like oh my god the bottom is in and it gets everybody bullish before it resumes its downtrend they're very deceiving especially when you're in a very bearish market. And in my opinion, the dollar index is in a very bearish market. But the squeezes that we could get from this bearish move could be quite rapid, strong, and deceiving, making it feel like, oh, a bottom's in. But look, I, I, I'm, I'm, looking at the, I'm looking at the dollar index, and frankly, we have this you know, double bottom here we clear that level, we could be trading right here. No problem. We could go whoop, whoop, really fast. And it'll freak everybody out, okay? That's why I'm not too comfortable being short the dollar here. I'm not, I mean, I, I'm long the dollar right now at this very second being short some euros, but but I'm talking on a on a longer term scale point of view all right so anyway um we talked about the canadian uh, i don't know if uh, i'm trying to think of anything else here that i really wanted to discuss I, I i talked a little bit of bonds i want to leave some of the crosses um oh for those of you um that you use forex analytics only position i took home overnight was the pound yen or uh, pound new zealand excuse me and if you read the analysis, you'll understand why, okay? Yesterday, the pound New Zealand found the, the trend line support and bounce, which also may have created a small false breakdown. I think the bears need to be careful here for a possible move back to 192. We were trading at 190.15 when I picked it up, okay? See that false breakdown right there? See the trend line support right through here? See that? All that trend line support? So I bought the pound New Zealand uh, last night before I left the chat room. I'm like, hey guys, I'm gonna take a small piece of the pound New Zealand long. Um, yeah, it was after the New Zealand um, uh, data, which was right here, by the way, the spike. I said, I'm gonna take a little piece of this long. I bought it like right here after it came back down. And uh, I sold it this morning at like 47, like right over here. So I'm, I'm already out, but that, that was the only thing that I was playing to the long side last night. Um, and, uh, you know, worked out, worked out fine. But, but if you, you know, if you use Forex analytics, you got to read through this analysis. I don't, I, I write all the analysis on the basic technical analysis during the week. Um, uh, uh, Steve and I have kind of switched roles. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing all of the pairs in the, throughout the course of the week at night. Uh, or at the end of the North American session. So if you guys uh, use Forex analytics, make sure you read through this analysis because I'm the one typing it out. 
Um, and, it, and you should be reading it anyways, regardless if it's me or Steve or, you know, whoever from our team, you should be, you should be reading it, but, you know, cause there's a lot of, lot of good clues in there. Um, okay. Uh, I, I heard Steve, uh, earlier, um, Stelios, I heard him as well. Good morning, guys. Hello. hello. What's up, mate? Hey, just uh, gonna get ready for this Canadian CPI coming out here in a minute. What are you guys? Uh, what are you guys up to? Uh, not much, as as you said, uh, the, the the markets were mostly boring yesterday, and you know, so far <clears throat> the day doesn't look like it's about to produce much fireworks. But you never know. You know, that's a good thing about the markets; they always always have the ability to surprise you, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I and I probably I probably jinxed the market by writing you this morning i said it looks like it's going to be a boring day today whenever i say things like that you know we could have black friday and then i'd be like oh of course <laughs> I, thought it was gonna, I thought it was going to be the, the the slowest day of the the week and then uh then the dow you know drops seven thousand points on us but i, yeah, I that, doubt that's going to happen i'm i'm that, being that's facetious what, there but that's what makes our job uh, so interesting right you, you can never be sure in advance what's about to happen Exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, Stelios, um, I, I know you put together a good uh, a blog about the, the bond market. Hopefully you can get that out today because we're seeing a little lift in the bond market. Yes, uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's precisely what we're going to be talking about. But yeah, yeah, we'll do that. All right. Some well, nice, uh, I'm not nice going to... Weekend, weekend reading. Well, go uh, ahead. Yeah, no problem. I was, yeah, I was it's going to be... Maybe in... some uh, a nice weekend reading for everybody. Well, I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'm going to let you guys talk about it. I got to get ready for this Canadian CPI. So, hey, guys and gals, thanks for everybody listening in, at least to me. But make sure you stick around with Steve and Stelios because they're going to be covering the Canadian uh, CPI and then also talking about the bond market, which I think is going to be a great conversation. So, uh, Steve, I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay, Blake. Thank you, mate. Greg is, right. uh, is likely going to be with us as well uh, at some point a little bit later. Great. So you guys will get a good Elliott Wave perspective, which will be awesome. So, hey, hey TGIF, everyone, have a wonderful weekend uh, if I don't chat with you, and, um, and good luck, everybody. Same to you, Blake. Same to you, mate. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay, uh, guys. I know that Blake started <clears throat> by mentioning the bonds, but if you remember, we, uh, you know, we we had we had been monitoring them closely, and there is a very good reason for that. But obviously, the bond market, you know, is is remains the biggest uh, market out there, and uh, it definitely has the ability to affect, you know, anything, risk, effects, etc. And as Blake already showed, you know, we we had, uh, you know, the double development. We we needed. We had three levels for confirmation that something is happening with the boons. One of them was a break above this descending wedge. We got that. The other one was a break above this channel. We got that. And the third one was a daily close above 159.25, which, you know, it looks likely that we, we might get it today. So I, I think, you know, that's uh, if we close the week above there, the day and the week above there, um, you know, there's going to be a different way to view this because, you know, many people will be talking about a false, false break lower. Uh, but regardless, I think that the uh, the market has the ability to uh, really uh, push higher from here and squeeze some positions. I mean, the next area of resistance is quite higher, I would say, at around 160.50, roughly. Um, and, you know, if you, if, if you notice, the treasury is have been underperforming the boons, there's no question about it, but they're also attempting to break above an equivalent descending wedge. And, you know, uh, this this can really shape what we're going to see ahead in the markets. Regardless, let me switch back to the USD card because we will have the Canadian data any second now. Stelio, please go ahead. As you see, the market, uh, as obvious, has uh, settled roughly uh, at midpoint in expectation of it. So far, we have an inside uh, spinning top today exactly at the 200 EMA. We got rejected from that yesterday, uh, but obviously if we see some weak Canadian data, we have the ability to push above there and um, uh, you know go to the next resistance zone, which is 127.80. I really believe that a weak CPI is going to more or less guarantee that we're going to test that area. It's also the 78.6 uh, of the move lower we had uh, from the highs from the double top here. 
Let's see, data should be out any second now. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we need some music for that, for <laughs> sure. Whenever we expect data. Oh, it's, it's strong. <laughs> it's stronger than it's strong. Yeah. It's strong. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Seeing the reaction, it's strong. Yeah. Seeing the reaction, it's strong. Uh, CPI me... 0.7 month on month versus 0.4 expected. Okay. Yep. But the year on year, from what year I year. see, is, is is as expected 1.7, right? Uh, no, no expectation was 1.4. Last count was 1.9, but it was expected to drop more. So it's kind of okay. dropped a, a slightly less, but overall a little bit better. And I think the CAD is showing that. Indeed, yeah. indeed. And and this has the potential to end up being an evening star formation, but it's very, very early to be talking about that because to be talking about the daily close, we, we need several hours ahead of us. Yeah, you're right. Stelio actual 1.7, expected 1.5, previous 1.9, uh, the month on month 0 0.7 in comparison to 0 0.4 expected and minus 0 0.4, which was the previous print. Uh, so overall, yeah, much yeah. stronger data than, ex than expected. Core CPI year on year 1.5 when the previous one was 1.2 and month on month the core CPI was 0 0.5 positive. Uh, versus minus 0 0.5, uh, which was the previous one. So overall, yeah, um, CPI uh, beat in, in all counts. Uh, Canadians, uh, Canada's three core CPI measure average 1.83 in January. Canadian consumer price index is 0 0.9. Yeah, okay. So uh, definitely that's going to be a headwind, a headwind uh, at least, uh, you know, uh, temporarily for uh, further appreciation. Let's see, the 200 DMA might prove to be, uh, you know, the technical catalyst uh, for a move lower. Um, but I have to say that, uh, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical. I, I first want to see uh, how the uh, how the day is going to um, end be before we can uh, discuss about, about anything else. Uh, we haven't hit yet the uh, bull flag uh, target and we haven't reached the next area of resistance uh, there at 127.80. Um, so I think that we might see people trying to buy this tip. Anyhow, regardless, um, we will find out during the next few hours. I think that the daily close here is going to be uh, quite important. Um, it's going to be quite important because you know it's the end of the week. Many people we will want to reassess their positions either at the end of the day or starting on Monday. I think if an evening start formation gets printed here on the 200 DMA, you know. Uh, we will see people being a lot more cautious in uh, in buying USD CAD here. Otherwise, if the market manages to shake off, uh, you know, this sell off in the USD CAD, uh, you know, we we will definitely resume, uh, you know, to the upside uh, in the short term because we've said plenty of times that in the medium to long term we are looking for further weakness in the USD CAD. The question is from which level that uh, is going to come. Um, I'm not going to focus more on, I know that we had some questions yesterday that we didn't have the time to answer and I'm glad to do so today, but let's have a very, very brief look at the majors. I have nothing to add to what Blake said about the Euro. Euro USD is barely holding, but it is holding the ascending channel and regardless, as long as we remain above 120, uh, 95, let's call it 121, uh, you know, uh, we can't really turn um, bearish in the medium term, in the short term, of course. It has the ability to sell off somewhat more. Same same deal here with um, uh, cable. Cable is oscillating more or less in what can be either a triangle or a bear flag or a bull flag. Sorry, um, as long as we remain above 136, same deal with the euro. I mean, uh, you know, in the short term we can see further weakness, but uh, the um, structure of the move lower uh really doesn't point to uh, to an intention for the pair to roll over and uh, just accelerate so uh the, the the move looks uh you know pretty much corrective and i think you should respect that even even if we see uh, the pair uh, uh, you know dripping lower uh, during the next few days or a couple of weeks now having to do with the aussie the aussie is uh, still playing ball. We we saw somewhat of a rebound yesterday. We're paring back the gains today. Um, I think that 77.40 remains the next obje next objective to the downside. Personally, I have no reason to be looking higher uh, until proven otherwise. Um, and now having to do with the Kiwi, 
finally, finally, we got uh, some real movement from the Kiwi. We managed to break below the 7330 uh, 7, uh, area yesterday, and that now opens uh, the door for a retest of the 7220 area. The 50 DMA is also there. This has been an area that has acted as support resistance several times uh, in the recent, the not so recent past. So um, I, I think that now that we actually managed to break below that area, more or less, I expect 7220 to act. Um, as a magnet. Obviously, the Kiwi remains much uh, much better behaved than the Aussie, um, and it's uh, you know uh, quite more uh, bid. So I would definitely need to see a break below that low to start believing that uh, you know the downside for the Kiwi is uh, more appealing. For the time being, uh, you know I, I would I would obviously uh, keep focusing uh, on the Aussie as long as you're looking. Um, lower now. Blake mentioned the USD sec, so I, I actually tweeted. I sorry, I I posted that yesterday on the chat room, and you know, uh, for me, if we even make an extension, a fib extension, you'll see why I was looking higher. Okay, uh, because we have the ability of that being like an ABC. And the zone I'm looking for is actually close to 8.26. Why? Because we have there the 61.8 of the last move lower. We also have there the 200 DMA. And the quality target for those two legs is a little bit lower at uh, roughly 8.23. Okay, so this is an area I'm focusing on. Let me draw it, actually. And I think that there is a good chance that we're going to see a reaction from there here. Okay, so this is the area I'm looking for, and if I see a reaction from there, I would be more than happy to actually be selling the USD sec. Now, if we go to the USD knock, because it's also a pair that we that we haven't really focused on the past few days, and for a good reason, because as you see, the um, price action has been rather choppy after we rebounded uh, from a, I'm not going to call it a false break lower in the sense that personally, I don't believe that this is going to cause a reversal like a big reversal i think that um eventually we're going to push to new lows um so i don't think this is actually a false break lower but anyhow for the in the short term you can even call it like that we got a reaction from that and now we seem to more or less be consolidating the knock remains rather strong uh in comparison to other pairs against the dollar there is a good reason for that and and there's a good reason for that by the way i would i would before i switch uh out from there and uh, use the knock. Let me say that I would I would be gladly selling the USD knock once again. Uh, ideally, I would want to do that higher. Okay, but I don't know if the market is going to give me that ability simply because crude has be has behaving quite well. So we found a low at 58. I was I was looking to buy crude at 58, but I actually chickened out of it because the speed with which we found the area I was looking for was quite fast. And, you know, that uh, that actually uh, had me not really convinced that, you know, uh, so soon we found um, a low because, you know, many times the market also needs to correct in time and not only in price. Um, so, you know, that, that kept me away from buying 58. But the fact that, you know, uh, the reaction we had higher, um, found some selling, but immediately, as you see yesterday, uh, we we bounced and we pushed to new highs, you know, tells me that the chances that this was a tradable low uh, having, have been increasing. Uh, obviously, 63.36, which is the 61.8, it was also previous support, I think is going to, is going to tell the story. So, um, you know, if we if we're looking for another leg lower in crude, I think that it shouldn't come higher from there. So, you know, above 63.50, I doubt that we're going to see another move uh, move lower before we get at least one more high ab above the previous high, which was almost at 67. So that's my view in crude. Uh, USD yen, I don't have much to say because Blake has been covering uh, covering it, you know, quite extensively. Nothing has changed we got rejected once again we remain below the 
absolutely no reason to switch from being bearish to use the yen. Um, okay, let me go to questions. And please, if you if you had any questions yesterday that we didn't have the time to address before the interview, this is your opportunity. Some of the questions are for Blake, then your yield. Yields rose and the USD JPY dropped. So why should it drop now when yields rise? That's a good question, Jason, actually. Um, but you know, you cannot count on the fact that a correlation that has broken and actually got reversed from what the standard is should remain broken forever, right? Because it's a well-established correlation. Uh, we have a friend here asking for the SPX. I, I also wrote about this yesterday in the chat room. Listen. There is a problem with being bearish the SPX at the moment, and the problem is the following. First of all, let me mark here. First of all, we've had one, two, three, four, let's call them negative days, uh, and price has retraced almost nothing. So this price action doesn't look, uh, that doesn't look impulsive in any way. Actually, if you if you think about it, it looks like it wants to break higher. And another reason I'm saying this is because I didn't draw this area yesterday, right? I had it there like for a long time. Just look where we found support yesterday, right? So I'm not saying that you should be bullish because we might keep doing something like that. But I, I have to tell you that so far. So far, the price action from uh, the uh, bounce highs, you know, definitely doesn't uh, point uh, to uh, another big sell off lower. Uh, so, you know, I, I remain skeptical here. I mean, the market might have another push higher to get people believing that we're pushing to new highs and then sell off once again because. Despite the fact that I'm viewing this as corrective so far, I remain of the opinion that the market is going to hold these highs for several days, perhaps weeks to come. Still, I don't think the market is ready to push to new highs, but it might be ready to push higher from where we are at the moment. Okay, so that's my view uh, having to do with the SPX at the moment. Uh, Europe. Euro yen and pound yen. Sure, let's have a look at them. Okay, this is the euro yen, and there is a big problem with the euro yen uh, here. The problem with the euro yen is that. Let me also show you the weekly. This is one of the things that I showed in the chat room yesterday. Okay, big problem. First big problem is that we broke below. This is the weekly chart now. Uh, we broke below a horizontal resistance area, well-established horizontal resistance area that had acted a couple of times as a support. And at the same time, we also broke below an ascending wedge. Now, the second problem is that the euro yen is threatening another horizontal support resistance area as we speak. And if we actually break below that as well, things you see the 200 DMA is also here. So let's say roughly if we if we break below 131 to to give it a, some space, you know things start become you know quite harder for the bulls. I think that if we, if we break below 131, we should see 129 come rather fast from there. So you know even if this is a corrective move lower. The fact that this was a, let's measure it actually. But roughly 26% move higher, you can easily understand that there is the potential for, you know, quite, quite a lot of a downside, right? Even if this moves, move proves to be corrective uh, to this 26% move higher. So, you know, uh, it doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. And you know, if if you want to be bullish, you really want to you really want to see this zone hold, because if we break below this zone, we're we're headed lower. 
Let's have a look at the pound yen. Okay, pound yen obviously looks somewhat better because first of all, it, it, it's holding a major zone, which is the 147, 50, 148 zone. We have also broken below a descending, sorry, an ascending wedge. You can see it here in red. But on the other hand, we are holding this ascending trend line. And at the same time, as I said, we are holding the 147, 50, 148 zone, which also hosts the 200 EMA. Why is it so major? Because it was support here and it has been resistant several times. And after we broke above it, it has acted as a support several times again. So the market has already determined that this is a major zone. That means two things. First of all, it means that there are a, a lot of stops residing here, right? So needless to say, you don't need to be extremely experienced. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that if the market actually penetrates this area, only the fact that a lot of people that have been long have set this area as the area that they want to ex exit their trade should at least be good enough to accelerate the pair lower. So it's all about 148 here. Okay, as long as, as the pair is holding 148, fine. I mean, you can remain bullish, you have a good reward to risk ratio, uh, and you know that's why we, we use stop losses in, uh, in trading. But if we break below there, I would have to warn you that you know, you'd rather either be short or, you know, not involved in the market. That, that's that's my, my viewpoint about it. Okay, let me see more questions. Uh, Cut Swiss, uh, uh, yeah, that's the spelling. You mean bullish engulfing in last stage of ending diagonal? Also have a question for Grega. Elliot waves are based on emotions. Fear, greed, etc. I added greed, but yeah. Uh, do you think that the lead wave will be less predictable as computers and programs are trading instead of humans? That's actually a good question. I doubt it will be uh, because I doubt that the market is ever going to be traded mainly by computers and programs. Uh, but let's hope that Greg is, is going to make it and be with us and, and you can ask him that question. Um, let's have a look at the card switch. So I think I have it here. Yep, here it is. Okay, let's see. This is the last time we saw Cut Swiss. It's, it's been some time. We were speaking for a possibility of an inverted head and shoulders formation, but we had said that for the market to hold this zone is extremely imperative because that zone was support resistance zone, had the 200 EMA, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So last time we saw this, we, we were seeing this corrective price action and then we broke higher and then we collapsed. So obviously two things have happened. First of all, we've invalidated the inverted head and shoulder scenario. And second of all, I have to tell you that this move You don't need to be very experienced to realize that it's impulsive in nature, right? Just look at yes. it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Welcome, Grega. So, Grega, before you give us your opinion here, which I'm pretty sure that you also view this as impulsive, we had a very good question from our friend Robert. He asked, uh, since Elliott waves are based on emotions, on human emotions and human psychology, do you think that Elliott Wave will be less potent, uh, less capable of predicting uh, as computers and programs are doing more trading? He says, as they take over, personally, I don't believe that, especially big hedge funds and, you know, the big money will uh, will ever be, uh, you know, uh, solely um, Actually, left. It's, yeah? you know, investors' psychology has impact on the markets because money is involved. So it's based on exactly. It's based on how much money you put in one side of a trade, for example. Okay. So even if trading, even if robots were trading it, there will still be robots who will put money into the market. So yeah, humans, you mean? Humans, yeah, you mean? So it's still, 
it it will actually still uh, supply be supply and demand. Some some robots will sell, some robots will, will buy, and actually uh, this will form a new structure and, and a new swings. So I don't think that uh, market will just not work in such case. And, and you know something, uh, Gregor? I just thought of something else as well. Uh, you know, there is a very good chance that <laughs> robots uh, imitating past market behavior will actually be uh, enhancing um, the reappearance of the same patterns. Because when you input data in a robot, what kind of data are you going to use? Historical data, correct? But okay. historical data already embeds the way that human psychology was working in the markets. So if we consider that a lot of robots might be trading um, in a way fractals, right? Then in one sense, if you think about it, perhaps robots even make uh, Elliot waves even more potent. So there is, you know, there is another side to the same only, coin. The only difference between the robots and humans who make decisions where to buy or sell is that in such case, emotions are not involved. Only this is the difference, but still money is involved. And that's why I think, and which means supply demand is still there, which means it's still market, which means there will still be patterns. Yeah, and as Ziggy says here, robots are programmed by humans, uh, so they really just act faster on human thinking. And that's also a very good point, in essence, a very good point. Uh, yes. And so, Summit is also saying robots making a market more technical, be it fractals, Elliott Wave, FIBs, can be seen in cryptos where majority of the larger market making is done by machines. He has a point there. And, and to be honest, you can, I, I, I will pass you actually the screen. Um, it, it's, it's actually, that's, that's what I had been monitoring as well. And Blake had an amazing uh, pattern in play. Um, the, at least the two major uh, cryptocurrencies that I've been monitoring, I mean, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, have been extremely technical lately, right, Gregor? Yes, because even if there are, I have received a lot of questions as well. If I think that bit, uh, that Elliott Wave will work on crypto markets, et cetera, because it's some, some new financial markets and, and it's simple answer. Even if it's other financial markets, even if it's, if it's structured differently than any market that we know that is regulated, still market psychology, investors mood who are involved in, the, in this market remains the same. Through history, psychology remains the same even if the market changes. So this is why Elliott Wave is probably, as I know it, probably the best tool because it's combination of technical analysis with investors' mood, with investor decisions, with investors' psychology. And that's why it's probably this tool probably the best you can, the, the best thing that you can actually achieve, you can get from that. When you let, let me let me also, Gregor, officially. I mean, we've already said it, of course. Uh, <laughs> congratulate you for winning the best buy side uh, analyst. We're happy that uh, you know both you and Forex Analytics won in the equivalent uh, categories, the FX Street Awards. I'm uh, I'm this absolutely <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely. So in essence, you won twice. <laughs> You're the only person that won twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so tell me, what do you see at the moment as being the most clear markets in your mind? I mean, what what strikes you as obvious at the moment uh, by looking at the markets? Uh, here I have above it's the ten-year U.S. notes. What I'm looking at here, as you know, I was very bearish on ten-year U.S. notes for the last six months or so. But what we can see in the recent phase is that actually bearish momentum is decreasing. And ideally, this is forming an ending diagonal. And it's not really a surprise if you consider that we are here in this uh, fifth wave, which means that current bearish cycle could come to an end. So now the question is how this will impact the other markets. If we take a look on this in the middle, which is the S&P 500 futures, it's March contract. Actually, what we can see is that this S&P has been in a recovery mode since 10-year US notes were forming 
this decline in ending diagonal. Okay, mm -hmm. so it suggests that we know that ending diagonal, the wedge pattern, it's a very powerful reversal pattern. And when volume picks up, strong move occurs, but normally in opposite direction. And normally this will take price back to the area of a former wave four, which was here. And this spike also speaks for itself. It means because it was a very strong reaction from there, it means there it's definitely important level. So I would not be really surprised once we start to accelerate into the upside that we will go back to this level. So now the question is, how will this impact the stock market? Well, if we consider that this has been a recovery, okay, on US stocks, uh, and if this market, 10 year US notes, will start to, to rise inclusively, then I think that this market could continue or turn to the downside. Mm -hmm. So, what I would watch out is for a potential sell off next week, maybe not impulsive sell off, but definitely some kind of a lower price action here uh, on the SP 500 towards uh, 2600 or so. Um, and during this time, I think that yen could be very interesting for more gains, especially against like pound or something, because uh, if I take a look on pound yen, uh, as I know, pound yen is very, very weak. Uh, just let me find Pound it. yen is flirting with a major level. I was showing it before. 148 is major, major for the market. If we see a breakdown yes. below 147.50, oh, oh, 148, oh, yeah. The idea is actually that Pound yen is already weak, or I should say yen strong against pound without S&P breaking to the downside. So mm -hmm. if this will happen, then I think uh, on stock market, on stock market, then I think that this pound yen could really just continue to the downside next week towards 146 even lower. And in fact, this would then be a five wave decline away from this ending diagonal top formation. That we called it, or which makes that probably a, a major top, right? A tradable top, definitely, definitely. So it's already we have an ending diagonal. This for itself is already a top uh, evidence, and now another five-way decline would be just even stronger conviction that on the end is going to the downside. Um, also, here I what I wanted to point out here uh, at the bottom I have also chart of dollar index. Okay, so now we made a correlation between 10 year US notes and the S&P 500. But here we have also dollar index. Notice that correlation uh, when you compare it with the S&P 500 is negative. Here was uh, S&P 500 moving to the downside, dollar index recovered. Then we have seen S&P 500 recovered, dollar index moved to the downside. And when S&P 500 was slightly under pressure this week, actually sideways, dollar index has moved to the upside. So if stocks will turn to the downside, will continue lower, then I think there can be more upside coming on dollar index. I know that I have, I'm actually tracking some kind of a bullish pattern on euro dollar. So I would leave euro dollar on the sideline because if I see uh, intermarket analysis suggesting that dollar could actually be rise then i will not play against strong currencies such as euro which was one of the euro yeah 17. so i will rather look at some commodity currencies so uh wave count for itself it's definitely much much better there so if we take a look as it i'm already the, i'm already short the aussie uh, dollar from uh, 0 70 what is it let me let me check so i'm not yes we are also uh, I and I don't know if Blake is still in. I also shared PIP for clients. 78.75. That's my entry. 0.78.75. Yes. <clears throat> and I also shared PIP when we were here. Uh, yeah, back that, on that was that was a great that was a great. Yes, and actually I'm leaving this for much lower levels. So uh, as I said, dollar could see more gains if we consider what S and P 500 can do what 10 year US notes can do, okay? So I will not play Euro dollar longs or not even Euro dollar shorts, even if I uh, think the dollar could see more gains, but I will rather play Aussie dollar shorts because Aussie for itself, it has a very clear bearish wave count. Impulsive drop, free wave price. We know that when market makes a corrective recovery, this recovery should be fully retraced, which means we are looking back beneath 7759 so definitely i'm expecting more weakness here 
but I believe this will not just reach 7759, but we will see a drop towards um, equality level. So uh, I will take distance of wave A and project it. Equality level here is 61.8. Equality level is around 76. So can, actually, can, can, can you show me the track. bigger? Can you show me the bigger structure? Do you think that this is a big ABC? What would? How do you use? Uh, bigger structure is a little bit tricky. Uh, it can be only a temporary pullback as part of this ongoing ending diagonal, which means that another leg push to the upside could come here for wave five, or maybe if we will just continue sharply lower in this third leg of decline and maybe break beneath this red trendline support, then I will just switch this wave C to become wave three, and then I will look much, much lower. Got so, it. Got it. so for the short term, actually, I don't care. We are because short for wave so C or for wave three. Yeah. Yes, but when it comes to trading, again, uh, I said that I always said um, risk reward based on minimum expectations. So my minimum expectations is wave C but I always trying to leave my targets open. So now imagine if this will prove to be wave free rather than wave C. Then yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yes, then of course, downside potential is much, much bigger. So uh, when it comes to trading, I don't really care either if it's wave C or wave B. I will just adjust if needed when we reach and see the, how prices will respond at this trend line. So that's all what it matters at this stage. Okay, and as it, not as a door, even door cat. Uh, I can take a look at this one also very quickly. Yeah, you know, we just I, have data about it. Yes, and I have been bullish on door cat for a while. You can see this arrow actually. Uh, and I have said that there, there is a bullish head and shoulders in play. I for firstly I thought that this wave two would finish earlier, but anyhow, it was a, free, a clear free wave pullback back for 50 per, or 61.8%. So perfect bounce has followed, and actually if this is a wave three, if we consider that um, this whole decline from uh, November, better shown here on a uh, daily chart, was just a temporary movement, then we know that there's more upside potential, even towards this wave A equals to wave C level at 1.31. Okay, so uh, there is uh, more the upside. 61.8 is somewhere there as well, if I remember right. Let me check. Yes, I have it here. Yeah, the 61.8 is also there. Yeah. This was just a big expanded flat correction uh, with an extended wave C that stopped at, at last few level 78.6. And since we turned very nicely to the upside, I think that this is also very interesting for more gains next week. Also, I can see a very nice interesting spike here. Now, this was an intraday chart that I was tracking earlier. So an ABC decline right into this yellow box. It was a perfect support for more wave for 50% retracement. So I think that really we could just continue higher, especially if we close at these levels, which means that bears were just temporary. And if we go even climb even higher, then this would be even stronger conviction that we are back on a bullish track and that this was just a temporary sell. Very nice, very nice. So uh, from from what I see, we we are also aligned uh, both uh, Blake and I, and I know you as well. Uh, we were looking for the dollar to find the bottom. Actually, we had multiple supports at the 88.50 area. The dollar most more or less uh, broke falsely below uh, the 88.50 area there. Um, I see that you're still looking though for another push to new lows. Um, personally, I, I told you last time you were here as well. Personally, I think that if we break above 91, uh, the market is going to get squeezed. I mean, I don't see a likely scenario that we will manage to break above 91 and the market will manage to roll over from there. So we uh, either roll... 91 yeah. is exactly the level which I would not say 91. I would probably more focus on 90, uh, 91, 50 and 92 because 91, maybe we can see a 20 pips, 30 pips, spike higher than turn to the downside. So actually, 91 is pretty good resistance. Also, 90, uh, 91 was, what was this spike here? Here was exactly this. If we assume that this was a end of a wave four, then you can see here 91. So actually, all, all around this level, I think we should be very careful um, because- Greg, uh, from an Elliott wave perspective, the fact that the last push lower 
was a false break lower and we actually did push to new lows even incrementally doesn't that theoretically satisfy that as a level as a wave five so isn't it very well, likely that uh, we did find well, a low there yeah i have this alternate scenario but there there are some guidelines which helps you to successfully predict the next move based on the elliott wave structure so what actually you should um, you should not ignore is the distance of wave five. Normally, when you have an extended wave three, wave five, okay, would be similar to wave one. This clearly was not the case. Also, when you see wave five, you should see clear five subways within wave five, which should normally break well below this wave three level. And clearly, this did not happen. So, if we consider that this did not happen, then we can ask ourselves what is going on there. Well, there you have then a flat formation. And a flat formation mm -hmm. is just exactly what is happening now. A flat formation is a 3 3 5 pattern where each flag will typically form a fake breakout. Okay? So this is exactly why flat formations are occur so often and work so very well. Because a lot of traders will think that something has changed based on Based on and they the will get trapped to the wrong to the wrong direction. Yes. So they say, okay, it was new low, that's the end. But you have to look at the substructure of this lag. You have to look how far this lag, this fifth wave went. If it's very small, if it was finished at uh, the previous lows, then probably this more fits into a flat correction. Okay. So what I think and what I see is actually this was still. Okay, so this is wave three. But okay, what I do this as a wave three and this as a wave four. Okay, so this is a flat correction. And what is really interesting and what is probably the most important is that this is still a sideways move. Okay, yeah, it is. you must look at as a whole picture, not as a just one piece of the puzzle. You must look at the whole picture. So this was this is just uh, this is still just a sideways price action so i think that it can be seen as a corrective movement and if we take a look on euro dollar um, here's this uh, sub that i'm tracking okay and you can see that i said on a dollar index we have seen move down potential wave b here on euro dollar obviously move to the upside also wave b then and you can see that clearly this cannot be counted in five waves okay you would if you would level this as a wave one this as a wave two this as a wave three four five if i just give you a quick example okay it's not really the perfect structure because wave four it's is not. Small, okay yeah. uh, three legs within wave one uh, so it's it's just in with this wave count you would be forcing your bias so True. if you really want to uh, try to respect what market is doing and if you respect all of the guidelines that I just went through then clearly you should level this and track this as a potential corrective movement within still ongoing uptrend to euro dollar and going ongoing downtrend on dollar index so that's why this is my primary outlook and also you need to ask yourself if euro dollar is rising for the last for the rest, what, uh, uh, 15 months? 14 months. So? Yeah, so 14 months, what, something like that already. What is the greater probability that market has stopped here and we are going lower, or it's a greater probability that it, it will just continue to the upside? Absolutely. You don't have to persuade me. I was at, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning, I mean, uh, at the bottom of the hour when I took over from Blake, the, one of the first things I said is that for me, uh, the moves lower both in the euro usd and uh cable look corrective to me they really don't look look impulsive in any way i mean like if that. i if i had to do something i would be buying them yes so that's why I'm, uh, i said earlier so if you see dollar that maybe based on intermarket analysis that i made just earlier so if you see this situation then you would not trade euro dollar i, I said to <clears throat> in the chat room that i would probably love to be shorting the euro dollar but with this kind of a price action with the of a flat formation i don't want to be euro if 
I think that somehow in the near term dollar could get stronger. I would rather look on opportunities on, against commodity currencies. But if dollar index will start to turn to the downside, if we will see even commodity currencies recovering, then I will switch to euro. So euro for now is just like a, my backup plan to know where to go if dollar will be pressured to the downside. Very nice. Um, let me ask you something. We, we, we have a friend here, Martin. He says, hi, I would like to have Gregor's update on SPX. Uh, I see that he's still buries in the last FA post. Um, so I know that indirectly you mentioned it in comparison to the correlation with uh, the DXY. But do you have a short term count about what you see here? Because I have oh. to tell you something. One of the things I also said is that mm -hmm. the fact that since we found that high, um, that rebound high several days ago, that price action has been very slowly moving lower, uh, tells me that the market might want to push one more time higher. And when I say higher, I don't mean higher than the previous high that we found, but I mean in the short term, it might want to push a little bit higher from what looks to be like a yeah. bull flag to me right now before yes. it actually rolls over. Yes, I agree. Definitely, this is not very clear where we, <clears throat> what is going on. And clearly, it's not really bearish yet at yeah, this stage. I would not be surprised if maybe this is going to be ABC and this was just like X. And we are. And going then an ABC. Yeah more complex uh, correction to the upside. So definitely, uh, I think that there is a chance that we will see uh, higher prices here. Okay, yeah. or just go into some more sideways complex correction. This was quite aggressive sell-off. So something more complex and tricky here should not surprise us. Yeah, and you know something, uh, because the markets have the ability to inflict maximum pain in maximum number of participants, I would really uh, want to see like 2,800 print again, see some euphoria coming back. Oh, come on, it was just a one-time incident there because the VIX futures got blown off, etc. And, you know, it's a matter of days to push to new highs. And when everybody gets comfortable again that, you know, the market is, uh, ha has been restored back to bullish mode, then selling off once again. Yes when there we will be close to a new high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to the 78.6 for example as you as you as you put there. Yes. <clears throat> this is probably the most important fib level, one of the pullbacks, definitely. So yeah. Uh, guys, if you're bullish Euro EURUSD does not mean it would be silly to go long boons, Catherine is asking. Here, uh, uh, by, by the way, I have to tell you, Gregor, that I've been tracking the boons since several days ago. I was tracking them initially as a descending wedge, and they have actually uh, they they have actually done very very good. I mean, uh, uh, I think they look even more more uh, they they look even better than treasuries for a reversal. I don't know if uh, I, I I know that actually that you're tracking the boons as well. So I don't yeah. I don't know. If, Actually, I do not track it so, so uh, uh, on a daily basis, but yeah. I have an eye on it definitely. Uh, yeah. uh, what was the question? If can you repeat? so, Catherine is asking. Uh, in essence, she's asking if um, if uh, we are bullish Euro USD. Uh, if that means that be being long uh, bond does not bode well with it. Um, and you know, well, so uh, the term could see more downside than good. This is what she means, uh, yeah. But you know, we, we, we uh, my, my comment there, Catherine, is the following is that first of all, the correlations are not always perfect, which means that in the short term, you might be seeing um, uh, rates, rate differentials decouple with Euro USD. For example, we saw that for a big period of time when Euro USD was still pushing to the lows. The rate differentials were actually pointing to much higher Euro USD rates, and we didn't have that for a big period of time. So one you have to take into account is that FX tracks very well rate differentials, but not on a daily basis. And the second thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, the Euro USD, as obviously 
any um, FX pair is a pair, which means that what boons do don't matter in an isolated environment because rate differentials come from uh, you know what happens to boons and what happens to treasuries at the same time. So, for example, depends on what treasuries do against the boons. But coming back to my initial comment, you can even see rate differentials decouple with how the FX pair moves for several days, on occasion, several weeks as well. So in my opinion and from my experience, and I'm pretty sure that Greg is of the same opinion because we've had conversations about correlations in the past. Um, yes, but correlations see... here, I'm just looking at the chart. Yeah. Related one. <clears throat> so let me finish this sentence. So what I wanted to say is that if you see a good technical pattern in Boons and a good technical pattern in the Euro USD, and you're not considering of trading it to the long term, I think that you should completely ignore, uh, you know, if, if it bodes well having to do with correlations. And you should trade both of them, and, you know, you might actually make it with both of them. I've seen that happen, right, Greg? I mean, sometimes you see something, a very, a very clean setup in the market, but it, it, it conflicts somewhat with something else that you're watching, uh, but they might both end up working in the short term, correct? Yes, exactly. So, uh, actually, it's really important to analyze the markets to align before we decide something. That's why I always try to look at very different correlated markets all the time. As so, well. so, you think we might we might have found a high, a, a wave four high here in the boons? Um, I think that as a look here from the top, okay, uh, let's say that here was a wave E finished of a bigger mm -hmm. correction. Here was wave two, and if I make this wave count more, more detailed. So here was first five wave fall for wave one, then you have a wave two pullback, and then you have an extended five wave fall, which means five subways within wave three. And now it appears that we are also here in a new corrective phase. So for now, this is still not a five wave movement to the upside, okay, or a clear, impulsive, strong uh, reaction. So it's some kind of overlapping for now. So it can be correction. Actually, we are also here at this resistance area. And also, I believe that we are here at this old swing lows. Okay, so euro dollar at the same time is at the support. Okay. Okay, so you see the potential for another move to push the lows. What I wanted to say is that correlation is here, is doing quite well negatively. Mm -hmm. So you you can see here clearly from this was what. Uh, so when Boon started to roll over, uh, it was at the start of December. That's when euro dollar started to rise. I said also that I see euro dollar in a way four. So this can also be a way four based on what we see. So okay. maybe it's it's not a bad idea to find this market to track it and look for potential resistance. But I would, as I said, uh, for me, I would not trade boons. Okay, I just see boons suggest that there can be more upside coming for euro, and which means I will take a look still on general dollar uh, movements based on sentiment. If we see dollar start starting to fall even against commodity currencies, as I said earlier, then I would switch to bullish pair with a bullish structure, which is euro dollar. Which makes me understand that you remain quite bullish euro and pound crosses against commodity currencies, right? Which for a good reason, to be honest, because if you look at all of those charts, we still, uh, we have still kept printing higher lows all the way. So there is absolutely no reason not to be, uh, to, to be, uh, bullish. The Euro Aussie, I mean, the Euro Kiwi, the Pound yes. Aussie, the Pound Kiwi. Yes, right? even Euro Aussie, if um, Euro Aussie, I think it has some very nice looking structure. I can look at the Euro Aussie. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh,
so actually here we have a big flat correction yeah as you can see they, it's 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 clear as daylight that this price action is not bearish not bearish yeah, yeah. So again, even if it said it's very similar actually to that dollar index, it said we have seen a spike to a new high, right? That to a new low on dollar index when you yes. have potential bottom. So here was also the same thing, new spike to a new high. So when you have just, just a small temporary move, that's probably it. And then a strong reversal, that's probably an evidence that this move, this lag, is part of some bigger structure. Especially it's made yeah. by three waves so again you should not look for only one leg from here one movement you should rather focus on the whole price action from here and you can clearly see as this box i have with this box a lot you can clearly see that we are bounced from one side to other so it's a sideways move and corrective patterns like a flat it's a sideways pattern which means it's a corrective pattern and you can recognize correction very simply if we also make the similar box in the previous sharp reaction okay yeah. so you which, which makes it obvious that we, we yeah that we, we ascend it in price much faster yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so if anything is impulsive here then this was impulsive if anything is corrective then this is corrective so next leg you should be looking for moves to continue in the direction of a previous impulse, which was up, which means you would expect up. Also here, if you focus on this sub, sub waves, you can probably count here five waves up. Five waves. Yeah. Okay, very so. nice. Thank you very much, Greg. I really think that you know you you put everything in perspective. You know, it's so it's always nice because with Elliott wave analysis, you know, you can always do a top-down analysis and you know uh, have a view from the long term. Uh, to the short term and you know I, I, I first of all I'm always happy when I see that we we are looking at the same side of the market because you know I I appreciate you and I know how skilled you are so you know you, you always uh, put things in perspective so thank you very much for uh, coming it's always nice having you near the end of the week because it also puts everything in perspective ahead of the uh, upcoming week you know you being here on Thursday or Friday and Blake doing the um, a week ahead video every Sunday. I think it's the best uh, preparation for the upcoming week for uh, our listeners. Um, and thank you very much, mate. And congratulations once again for uh, winning the FX Street. Thank best you. Buy thank you. Same to you. And go good weekend to all of listeners. Okay. All of you guys and gals, thank you very much for being here for one more week. Uh, as we've said in the very beginning, uh, Dale is a little bit sick, so he couldn't make it today, but our thoughts are with him. It's nothing much. He, he has the flu, so don't worry about it. And we'll see you again uh, on Monday. Okay, enjoy. TGIF.